Hey, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we got a couple of things we want to talk about. We're going to talk about this infectious prevention and control guidelines for Ebola and Marburg virus disease, August 2023. This was the 11th of August, 2023. We're going to talk about this. Yes, yes, yes. I've known about this since it came out because one of my peoples, my people sent it to me. Okay. But hold on now. Hold on. Oh, got to talk to you guys about something else. Give you a little tidbit. Those of you who are dealing with worrying about filing bankruptcy, I'm not going to try to convince y'all that bankruptcy is your best option in just about every situation where you have a necessity that somebody's taken away. The government could be trying to take it away. Anybody could be trying to take it away. They cannot take your home or your car if it's your only car and your only home, they cannot put you out on the street, people. How does that work when you live in an apartment? I don't know. I can't help you with that because that's not yours. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I can tell you is I'm going to show you something. Let me show you something. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the daily text for Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, that's what it's called. And so pay attention. You should not withhold the wages of a hired worker all night until morning. Now, this has everything to do with bankruptcy and need you all to pay attention. This was Leviticus 19.13. This was the law. Leviticus, meaning first law. I got to answer this, y'all. Hold on one second. Okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I have been on that call and then taking care of some other minor things. But let's get back to this conversation here. For the sake of those of you who are about to lose your home, do not fret. You do have bankruptcy as your last option. That's the point. Bankruptcy is always supposed to be a final option. To stop a foreclosure, bankruptcy is your best friend. If your home is your primary residence, if it is your primary property, if it is your main means of shelter, the government cannot kick you out of your home so that somebody can collect their monies. Now, that process comes from Scripture. It does not come from Congress. You see, they're following scriptural tradition, ancient tradition. How so? Well, in ancient times, if a person was to have, and they were poor, and they were to have worked out an agreement, they say, well, look, I'll give you my, my winter coat. I, I, it's the only thing of value that I have. And a person says, okay, I'll take it. All right, if you don't pay me, then I'll take your winter coat. Okay. Well, the law was that if they worked out such an agreement and that was the only thing the person could have to remain, pay attention, warm at night so that they could survive the cold night, that the person holding on to the garment as collateral must return it every night to the individual. Every night. Why? Because if the individual froze to death, if they died, they could not pay the debt. And the whole issue was paying the debt, not taking the garment. And so the same thing with bankruptcy. Bankruptcy says without your home and without your car, you can't pay the debt. You can't get to work to work off the payment. So that's why they can't take your home or your car. Don't believe me? Go look it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known about it for years, but y'all should have known about it too. I can't tell y'all everything. Y'all got to know some things too. But let's get back to this right here. You see, Israel was an agricultural society. So I'm going to read the text. In the agricultural society of Israel, hired laborers were paid to be, or excuse me, to be paid at the end of each workday. To hold back the wages of some, I, see, I'm messing up. I apologize because I'm reading way ahead because I'm trying to get to the next point because we got so much to talk about. To hold back the wages of such a worker would deprive him of the money he needed to feed his family for that day. Jehovah explained, he is in need and his life depends on his wages. Today, many employers or employees have paid, are paid once or twice a month. Not every day. However, the principle of Leviticus 19.13 is still valid. Some employers take advantage of their employees by paying them an amount that is far below what is fair. 
they know that these workers have little choice but to continue working for starvation wages. In a sense, such employers are withholding wages of a hired worker. That's the phrase right there. That's why in SACOM and in any organization, a worker is due their hire. They must be paid. That's the agreement. And I literally break my neck, as they know, to make sure that they get what they got coming. A Christian who has a business would want to take this point to heart. I try. All right. So that's that, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to show that to you because we done talked, y'all. We done talked about bankruptcy and why bankruptcy is what it is. It's just that they've created so many bankruptcy forms with so many boxes to check that it ain't straightforward. That's what they've done, ladies and gentlemen. They've convoluted it. And then when you get an attorney, they don't even tell you that your house is exempt. They'll tell you, well, you're going to lose the house, so uh, you got any other place to stay? Notice, pay attention. The judge always asks you, do you have any other place to stay? Do you not know that they cannot evict you from your home if you were to say, that's the only place, that's the oh my, that's my house, that's my home. What are y'all doing to me? And you take on the bankruptcy, and you don't let the courts handle it, but you let the bankruptcy court handle it? Pay attention, y'all. Do your research. All right. Six minutes 30 seconds that's your tidbit now we're going to talk about the subject matter of the video ladies and gentlemen biological threat moscow holds a conference on future that's my phone again y'all that's it's sunday morning hold on now ladies and gentlemen let me see if i can explain what's going on here sorry that's going to be happening for uh we have about 40 minutes and it's going to be popping up here. We have a trade that's coming up. We have about 40 minutes before the trade. So there it is. See, less than an hour. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, biological threats. Moscow holds a conference. I told everybody that the pandemic wasn't over, that the pandemic I saw wasn't that junk we just went through. What I saw was what you were hearing about over in India, you know, where they were piling bodies up on street corners because they didn't have enough uh, people to take care of the morgue and cremor crematoriums. If you really have some money in your pocket, you want to invest in a crematorium. Sorry. If you really have some money in your pocket, I've been telling people this since, since 2015. You want to invest in a crematorium, especially the portable crematoriums. If you really got some money, that's where you're going to invest. Find it on the stock market, put some money in there. Okay? Find it on the stock market, put some money in there, and just let it sit. Don't touch it. And just wait and see. Now, I haven't listened to this. I've known about this article. This is a news broadcast. Okay? Nairobi. Hold on now. Russia's Ministry of Defense has released a statement revealing the murky activities of the United States military. The ministry says that Washington's Office of Pandemic Preparedness and Response Policy searches for virus mutations to then use them to further its own interests. For sure. As in 2019, the United States began preparing for a new pandemic by searching for virus mutations. We do not exclude the use by the United States of these so-called defensive technologies for offensive purposes, as well as for the purpose of global management by creating crisis situations of a biological nature. According to the ministry, what... Management by creating crisis situations of a offensive purposes, as well as for the purpose of global management by creating crisis situations of a.
biological nature. According to the ministry, Washington has been amassing a very... I had the mute button on. Ladies and gentlemen, they said global management. Global management. What are they managing globally? How would the United States manage anything globally? They're, they are the United States. They're not the world United States. They're the United States, not the world United States. Ain't no such thing as no world United States. No WNS. Okay? Ain't no world United States. Okay? Ain't no world United States. It's the United States. So how are they managing? Interesting, huh? Oh, look at that. Trump indicted on election interference in Georgia. Oh, okay. Let's get back to the facts, ladies and gentlemen. The United States using mutations of diseases as offensive weapons. The United States would never do anything like that. And don't y'all ever believe something like that. The United States would never, ever infect people with smallpox or any other disease how dare anybody say anything like that they would never experiment with people with medications without their knowing it okay how dare anybody suggest such a thing and don't none of you ever suggest that about the united states or the united states military because they would never ever do something like that shame on y'all for even thinking that the united states would ever operate in such a fashion there is no way in the world that the United States, this honorable government, would ever do such a thing. We're going to get back to the conversation. I dare y'all upset me by suggesting such a thing. ...pathogens from its direct involvement with various biolabs around the world, which they say are for research and preventative measures, but Russia's uh, defense ministry is not buying that. And they point out that whenever the Pentagon, for example, is interested in any pathogens, be it COVID-19 or avian influenza or the African swine flu, they later somehow end up becoming pandemic. And who stands to benefit from this? As we've seen time and time again it's american pharmaceutical companies and they point out their findings point out that for example that there is a possible collusion between big pharma and u.s aid via an intermediary company called eco health alliance now they have been studying uh the diversity of bad population eco health alliance ladies and gentlemen i never heard of eco health alliance have y'all Let's see if y'all can do some research and find out who EcoHealth Alliance is. I have no idea who EcoHealth Alliance. Man, EcoHealth Alliance, doesn't that sound like it's a very beneficial company? EcoHealth. Sounds like they're friendly. Eco-friendly. EcoHealth. They're worried about the health of the e e ecology. EcoHealth Alliance. That means they're there to, to help. Oh, such a beautiful name. I wonder. One second since 2015 and they've also been looking at mechanisms how to transfer uh, coronavirus strains from bats uh, to humans and we know that just two months before the world ever heard about COVID-19 there was an exercise conducted at the Johns Hopkins uh, University in New York where in that exercise entailed scientists transferring uh, an unknown at the time strain of coronavirus from bats to humans via a pig so of course all this uh, and the office that is now being open leads them to question why this is happening and of course they also point out that the u.s government for example uh in may this year said that there is no longer a public health emergency when it comes to COVID. joe biden himself last september said that the COVID pandemic is over yet this july they are opening this office of pandemic preparedness and response policy which is led by a man who is a military combat surgeon and retired air force major general why in addition to this documents that have been uncovered during russia a special military operation in Ukraine point to the fact that there is a center called the U.S. Uh, Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases actually plays that that, that does exist y'all she she the, the the news is not pro-american when we can hear that but that's we're not focused on that we focused on the questions that they're asking so hold on 
is a crucial role in all this, and they're the ones who are collecting all these dangerous pathogens from around the world uh, in these biolabs, including one in Ukraine. The U.S. Army Medical Research Institute for Infectious Diseases has been involved in U.S. biological programs in Ukraine. Thus, representatives of the institute actively led projects codenamed UP1 and UP8. As part of these projects, the possibility of using anthropods to spread Rixetia, tick-borne encephalitis virus, as well as causative agents of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever and auto-hunter viruses was studied. Ladies and gentlemen, I had heard the conversations that if people were to pay attention to the strikes that Russia was doing in Ukraine, they would see that many of the institutions that were being bombed in Ukraine were biological research labs in Ukraine, where they were doing this type of research. Now that I am listening to this article, I am now tending to believe that there may have been some truth to the rumor that Russia was intentionally bombing these facilities. Alex Jones, you are right again! Sorry, Alex Jones wasn't the one who said that. It was given to me by others, but I believe that Alex Jones may have mentioned such a thing. Don't know, but we're going to get back to the conversation. That's why Russia's defense ministry believes that Washington is preparing to establish biological control, sort of using defensive technologies for offensive purposes to create biological crisis conditions and situations. And also there is added concern about the people involved in all this. For example, Dr. Anthony Fauci, America's leading doctor, who was uh, the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. He has reportedly made a lot of money from this pandemic. And he's also the one who was adamant uh, that when it comes to COVID-19, it came about naturally. We have bio lab, labs in Ukraine because we're developing bioweapons. So they transferred the authority for uh, biosecurity to one agency in the, in the HHS uh, called the National Institute for Infectious and Allergic Diseases run by Anthony Fauci. Y'all, y'all know Mr. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Okay, y'all, 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 y'all know of him, right? Politician, just running for so-called presidency. Well, Mr. Kennedy is letting you guys know about the NIH, the National Institute of Health, run by Mr. Fauci. He ain't no doctor no more. He retired. Mr. Fauci um, said that everything was safe. Jab, jab, bang, bang, was safe. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And because he said the jab, jab, bang, bang, was safe. Um, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, okay. Could it be that that was part of this biological experiment? Yeah, 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 yeah. YouTube is going to take this video down too. I don't care. I, I don't care. I'm, I could give up about YouTube. Or they're claiming that they're worried about the community. YouTube is not worried about the community, ladies and gentlemen. I will tell you this about YouTube. There are some benefits to YouTube and their governance and taking down videos. Because certain videos, whoo ain't no freedom of speech. Mm -mm, that junk don't need to be up there. However, when people are doing news, see, the... People think that you need a press pass in order to be able to provide news to people. That's a lie. There is nothing, pay attention, in the First Amendment that says, it says freedom of the press. Hot off the presses. Well, see, there was no such thing as needing a press card in order to produce press-worthy material. Anybody can be a member of the press. Why? Because there was no guidelines for who was the press. A lot of people were depressed back then. Ladies and gentlemen, what you need to understand is back then, anybody could start a newspaper. They didn't need a special license. They simply had to start publishing the news. This was a tradition. That's what happened to William Tyndale and even Martin Luther, not Junior, 
no, not the King one, but the actual Martin Luther, the original, okay? So we're going to continue. So Anthony Fauci got all the responsibility for bioweapons development. He got, at that time, a 68% raise from the Pentagon. 300 scientists wrote President Obama and said, you've got to shut down Anthony Fauci because he's going to create a microbe that will, uh, that will cause a global pandemic. And so Obama signed a moratorium that shut down the 18 worst of Anthony Fauci's experiments. And, uh, and instead of obeying that law, Anthony Fauci shifted a lot of his operations offshore. Oh, say it ain't so. He, 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 he decided, okay, if y'all don't stop me over here, I'm going to go over there. No, he didn't. No, no, no. Anthony Fauci wouldn't do a thing like that and then claim that it was all oh, China. What he just said, ladies and gentlemen, what Mr. Robert F. Kennedy just mentioned is that Anthony Fauci and the NIH, National Institute of Health, worked out contracts with the laboratories in China and other places. Don't believe me? Listen to him again. Hold on. And those operations ended up, most of them in the Wuhan lab, which is a military lab and that the Chinese run the People's Liberation Army, and, uh, and then a lot of them went to the Ukraines. There will be those, of course, who will say that these are just all conspiracy theories or Russian propaganda, but we are talking about specific examples, specific organizations, and let's not forget that Washington has itself admitted that it does have bio labs, including in Ukraine. And again, let's not forget just how terrified they were at one point in case their research there falls into the wrong hands and how catastrophic that may be if it falls into Russian hands. So what that research there was all about, Perhaps this is what we're talking about. Perhaps. Perhaps. But she got her point across. That, that's all she was worried about is getting her point across. Thank you, young lady. Now, we're going to let you go now. Bye-bye. She gone, y'all. She, she, she not there no more. She, she finished. All right. She gone. Bye-bye. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got to get rid of this. And I don't know why it does this. It gets on my nerves when it does this. I, I wasn't trying to do this, but we got one more thing we need to talk about. We're going to talk about this right here. Infection Prevention and Control Guidelines for Ebola and Marburg Virus, August 2023. August 11, 2023. We're going to not read the whole thing. We're only going to read the basics right here. Pay attention. They have a report. They have a report. They have a report. They have a report. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll put the link to this in the video. I just copied it. Executive summary. Ebola disease and Marburg disease outbreaks continue to occur in Africa with increased frequency, in addition to resulting in high mo mortality and morbidity. The outbreaks generate fear and mistrust about the response activities within the communities affected. In other words, they don't trust these individuals coming and saying that they're coming to save their lives. Infection prevention and control is a key pillar in the outbreak response adherence to IPC, infection prevention and control practices, can prevent and control transmission of infections to healthcare workers, patients, and their families. During the 2014-2016 West Africa Ebola disease outbreak, there was an urgent need for infection prevention control guidance to help support ministries of health, health care providers, and non-governmental organizations, NGOs. In response, who, 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 the World Health Organization produced several documents related to the outbreak based on expert opinions, including IPC-specific documents and documents of clinical management that also reference IPC principles and practices. Since that time, many practices in the field have become institutionalized. That's right. They put them in jail. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, take the time to read this. 
Now, what I said is what happens when Ebola, Marburg, same thing, same, 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 same thing, same thing. What happens when Ebola and Marburg come together and they decide they want to hook up with uh, Corona? Because Corona has been out on the town, you know, everybody's been noticing Corona and Ebola and Marburg sitting up there noticing Corona too from a distance. But what if they meet? What if somebody match makes them say, hey, 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 y'all need to meet each other. And Ebola Corona uh, meets up with the Marburg and they all get together and they menage a trois. Patty LaBelle and her uh, boule coucou. You know what I'm saying? Say say what? Say what? Say what? Okay. That's a problem. So I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I cannot tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. You know what I can tell you? Is something's getting ready to happen. Why? Because this has been what they've been working with for the last couple of years. We know that they're still testing these viruses. We know that they're still testing these pathogens. We know that they're still experimenting. Anybody ever heard of Zinka? Where did that go? All of a sudden it was there. Turns out they released that into those islands on purpose. Having babies with deformed heads, smaller heads than big, huge bodies. Did that on purpose, ladies and gentlemen. Why would they do that? Syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, injecting people with these diseases. Why would the United States government participate in such a, a nefarious thing? So, as I stated, I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time, pointing out to y'all what's been going on. Okay? And the fact that you can hear about it if you were outside the United States. You would catch this news if you were outside the United States. I'm not saying that what we just heard was 100% factual. Of course it's propaganda. But sometimes some propaganda, there is truth mixed in the propaganda. So my suggestion to y'all, do your research. I'm going to put the link in the base of the video. Do your research. In the description, do your research. In the description, do your research. I got to go. I hope y'all take care of y'all sales, and we'll speak the next time. Until then, be safe and stay away from them preventive control diseases because they can prevent a lot of control.